lightning like Steve McQueen. I mean, I'm in fast lane when the light turns green. And I built tough, I ain't nothing but grit. Cause I made rugged blood. I fly, then I push yourself in for a bumpy ride. I like to play hard, but I work harder and I weather the storm because I'm built stronger. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back. We are live. It is the Freight Coach Morning Show, the top morning show in transportation, coming to you guys every single weekday, 8 30 a.m. Pacific, 10 30 Central, to break down some industry headlines and most importantly, provide some actual fucking insight into what you can do with all of this information. Um, I'm never going to sit up here and say that there aren't changes, that there aren't market shifts, that there aren't real things that are going to happen, but there are solutions to that. And that's what we're here to talk about. It is one of, one of many reasons why I proudly fly the American flag behind me every single day, because not only is this the greatest fucking nation on earth, I'm living my American dream, and I want to help each and every one of you guys live your American dream as well. Um Got a lot to talk about today. We'll do a little. This is going to be a solo show today. So I'm going to pull up a couple of lanes. We're going to do some market uh, research and kind of how I would price out this stuff moving forward based off of the information that I'm seeing out there in the market. And uh, yeah, we got some industry headlines that we're going to talk about as well. And But before we do any of that stuff, I got to give a shout out to my friends over at VHub, you guys, vhubapp.com. Brokers, carriers, shippers, we all need access to trailers, right? Um, and now on VHub, you have a seamless opportunity to get in there and lock up some of that uh, capacity. And the best part about it, if you're a small carrier, shut your opportunity. This is what, so with what they're working on right now, you guys, they got some trailers over in Paragold, Arkansas, going up to Orting, Washington, which is just outside of Tacoma. That is a very hot freight market right now. Very hot. Produce season, Christmas trees are about to pop off. Great position for you to be in. Fifteen fifty to do that, you guys, and that's on top of the revenue you can get by putting freight in the back of that trailer. They also are moving a reefer out of San Diego, going out to Selma, Texas, for eight hundred dollars. They also have San Diego going to Millbury, Ohio, for six hundred dollars, and then they also have San Diego going up to Spokane, another very solid market right now, historically speaking. And you get paid six hundred dollars to do that one. And then for my friends up in Canada, we got an offer opportunity for, oh, no, I'm sorry. I stand corrected. You get paid 250 Canadian to do this. Milton, Ontario to Montreal, Quebec. That's a reefer for that one. So hit them up, you guys. V-Hub. Be in the audience. Reach out to them. Say what's up. Let them know that the freight coach sent you. It always helps out, you guys. Rick Wooten, what's up? Good morning to you. Michael Thomas, top of the top. Happy Monday. Let's fucking go. Nicholas Leendo, what's up, my man? We got Vitaly. Vitality Becker is here. He's in the GTA. Go Canada. Go USA. I love it. Good to see you, V. Cody, what's up, brother? Happy Monday. Let's fucking go to you. Dion Lewis, what's up, my man? Salutation as well. Aaron, let's fucking go. Let's crush this week. Amen to that. You know, I put out a, a, a little post out there this morning. And again, like I put out those little daily clips, you know, um, A is a way to show that anybody who's like on the fence about creating content, um, all of those little daily ones that you see without any of the lights on and any of that shit, it's caught like I'm recording it off my cell phone every single time I'm recording it off my cell phone because you just got to start. But again, the topic today was about like, you know, ending the year on a high note. And, you know, for, for me personally, um, a lot of those videos that I put out there, you guys, it's like a lot of self-talk. It's like what goes on in between my ears and, and what I tell myself to, to really get through the days and everything. And it's true. It's like, we got like 61 days left. There's so much opportunity that's out there. And you know, a lot, you can look at it like one way of, I just got back to, uh, you know, like I'm behind on my goals and everything else. Like, am I really going to make any progress? Like that self-doubt is a real thing, but like, there's so much fucking opportunity right now when everybody else is going to take a step back because that's just generally what happens during these these times of uncertainty you know the economy is what it is everything is what it is right now the market's changed in transportation it's very apparent and everything else but like someone's going to come out of this on top is it going to be you or is it going to be somebody else and the efforts and the and the stuff that you put in today pays dividends long term for this so don't lose sight of that um I'm going to have another awesome couple of podcasts being put out this week as well for you guys to check out. Uh, let me see here. Drew Driscoll. That's right, man. Another Monday after a Vols win. Dude, this weekend's going to be sweet. 
This is going to be a big game for old Rocky Top out there. Number one, Georgia. Number two, Tennessee. When's the last time those two have met as number one and number two? I'm looking forward to that game. Uh, Bob, what's up, my man? Good morning to you. Lewis, what's up, baby? Let's fucking go. Um, Dion Lewis, uh, he's got three box trucks, but looking to scale with stinking dumps. Friend told me semis are better uh, being new to the industry. Uh, dumps are very specialized. It's a, it's a it's a it's a good opportunity to go after if you have the capital for it. But if you have box trucks, man, why 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 expand out? I think with box trucks alone right now and consumer purchasing behavior and everything else, the last mile, final final mile, all of that stuff is going to be a phenomenal opportunity. I don't think going into something completely unrelated like dumps would be a solid move. Again, I've never done this, but if I'm putting my opinion out there based off of my industry experience. I would double down on box trucks and expand out in there, man. Find dedicated customers for that local. I don't know where you are, Dion, but I, I, that's what I would do. Uh, I, I would just double down on, on your area. Um, Nick Erdman, what's up? Good morning. Let's fucking go. Um, Cassandra, I, I, I'm going to, Kadaviat, I'm, I'm going to botch your last name. I'm sorry. She's got a load um, from Val de, de Source. Quebec to Jerome, Idaho. If anyone wants to grab that, uh, coming back from Montreal, hit her up on that. If you guys are up there, Roy Medina, good morning. And then we got LinkedIn user who says Vols by a million over the dogs. Let's fucking go. I love it. I love it. Adam, what's up? Last day of the month. It's grind time. That's right, my man. It is grind time. Uh, some advice from Vitaly. Find a retailer, a lot of demand for box trucks and Sprinter. Um, and that's coming from somebody who has what we all want there, Dion. Uh, you know, find a retailer, go on that Chicago land area, um, is where Dion's at. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I just feel like there's so much opportunity within the niche. And I talk about this a lot. I'm all about the niche, you know, in, in my brokerage, open deck, heavy haul, very specialized moves. That's what we're going after because that, you know, to build out, you got to start with one thing. And you, I, I just don't feel like shifting, uh, due to a market is the most sound advice out there. Um, I think that you need to, in those times, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more uncertain, but like this is going to pass and you could be the top box truck provider in Chicago by the time this market flips up there, Dion. All right. We're at day 146 of the freight coach tally. We all know what that means. There is a truck parking and facilities issue that is out there for our drivers. Um, and then here's also another subtle slap in the face. From yours truly, that diesel is still at five dollars and thirty-four cents a gallon. Uh, God knows what it's going to go up to. Uh, that will be released later on today. Uh, I get that information from the EIA. EIA.gov is that uh, source that I use. Um, let me see here. Look at that, Dion. Hit up Drew Driscoll right there. He's got some business for you, brother. Connect, Dion Lewis. Connect with Drew Driscoll with Axel Logistics. There we go. That's what it's all about, you guys. You know, again, like I brought up, if your company's hiring, we need to put uh, put that job out there. If your company's hiring, I'm personally hiring uh, in inside of my organization. So if you're looking for a job, you can reach out to me direct. I know uh, my friend Chandler McGon in Dallas, Texas. If you're a freight broker, reach out to him. Cassandra Gaines with Carrier Sure, she's hiring. Right now, and if your company's hiring, put that in the comments. If you're looking for a job, connect with these people. If you were at Convoy and you were affected by this, put that stuff in there or reach out to me direct. Uh, I'll help you out with anybody, you know, in any way I can, you guys. Um, I know a lot of people in this industry, and if you know, I, I can put you in contact with the right people and, and try and help you guys out. Um, let me see here. Pop it bear in a chair. Thoughts on a diesel shortage? Ah. Uh, <laughs> My honest opinion, I, I, I'm not saying that it's it's a very real thing that we're down to this that supply. I just think it's uh, being overblown in a sense of like just just and I'm just saying that because of how close it is to fucking midterms. All right, I think this is a complete political ploy. Um, at the, like in my opinion, I'm not saying that that this isn't a real thing, but I think politics has a lot to do with it right now, considering midterms are next week. Um. It's yeah, it's not good though. It's not good and it, it could easily be fixed. All right. Papa Baron a chair, the diesel shortage 
could easily be fixed if they wanted to. Uh, Cody Miller, good fucking morning and happy Halloween. That's right. You know what? Shout out to the orange shirt gang. It's our one of many days of the year that we're fucking representing, but it's Halloween today and God damn it. I don't look out of place, but frankly, I am very much in place by having uh, an orange shirt on. I appreciate that. Uh, and then win wins all day. That's all it's about. Riz Bond booking for Georgia. Um, if you want to put some more context behind that, Riz, that'd be appreciated. Caroline Lyle, what's up? Good morning to you. I'm going to be with her in a couple of weeks out in Washington, D.C. at the NMFTA conference. Your boy's going to be going live there. You'll definitely be able to recognize me in the orange shirt. So if you're going to be at that conference and you want to jump on the live show with me, hit me up. We'll make it happen. All right. So we're going to do a little freight market update here. We're going to talk flatbeds. You know, because that's just my jam and I like it. If you're, if you got some freight in the Houston market right now for flatbeds, outbound Houston is very tight, very tight capacity. Uh, it's essentially one, there's like a little over one load to one truck out there right now. But again, that's good news if you have that truck because you can kind of get a little bit more money in those markets. Um, if you're going into the Charlotte, North Carolina freight market with a flatbed, it's moderately tight right now. There's about 3,700 trucks to 1,500 loads. Um, outbound Charlotte flatbed is neutral, uh, and that's about 6,000 loads to about 4,000 trucks as a whole. So again, like when it comes to that, it doesn't sway much. But you know, based on that, you guys, I think like for me personally, there's just a lot of opportunity in the open deck, especially with the uh, Build Back Better plan or the infrastructure bill, whatever you want to call it that got released there's gonna be a lot of bridges and shit being built and there's just a ton of opportunity that's out there so i would take that and air that on a side of caution and and kind of run with that but let's uh dive into some articles here this one first one is going to be from my friends over at the joc joc.com and as always you guys all the articles that i put out there i'll put the links up on the youtube channel uh the freight coach as well as the coffee with the freight coach audio only replay of this so you get, you know, again, do, do your own research, read on this. And if you're going to go over to those platforms, you do your boy a solid and subscribe and rank the show out there. I would appreciate it. Um, all right. First article is us trailer demand defies economic downturn. Wabash national can't build drive in refrigerated trailers fast enough to meet demand. So the equipment manufacturer is expanding its plant in Lafayette, Indiana, boom, more jobs to turn out more drive in trailers staying, starting in the first quarter and is expanding production of the refrigerated trailers as well. The expanded use of drop and hook trailer pools by shippers, carriers, and third-party bookers, brokers, excuse me, um, is driving demand for the traditional uh, drive van 53-foot trailer. You can also jump on VHub. Um, the rolling box is moving uh, the forefront of supply chain strategies alongside container chassis instead of just being uh, trailing equipment. Trailers are increasingly expensive. New drive vans can cost between fifty and sixty thousand, and even used trailers can be at forty thousand and more depending on the make and model year new us tra net us trailer orders in september rose 47 percent from august to 26,000 units as trailer manufacturers begin accepting 2023 orders however net orders were down eight percent from a year ago um incomplete trailers were red tagged as factory factory lots are moving while manufacturing manufacturers continue to wrestle with rolling supply chain disruptions as well as challenges on the labor front tangible improvements are being made um, Wabash increased new trailer ship by 7.3% year over year and uh, after a 17.9% margin gain in the second quarter. However, 13,000 trailers shipped last quarter were still 2.4% uh, below the roughly almost 14,000 trailers Wabash shipped in the third quarter of pre-pandemic 2019. Um, it's another sign trailer markers. Excuse me. Similar to most manufacturers are still dealing with supply chain disruptions. Wabash is confident will grow recession or not. Um, Implied demand for our products is so far above industry capacity that even if implied demand is reduced by a macro event, we still suspect that the result would be uh, considered a good year for it. And, and again, I think like with what you're seeing a lot out there is, you know, I wouldn't be surprised because this was just like kind of like what happened with the new truck and the used truck market. And again, forgive me if you're a chief economist somewhere, but I went to public school and generally speaking, when you can buy new uh, people are going to go to that, especially when you haven't been able to buy new equipment. 
at scale like you have in the past over the last couple of years. So I think the the purchasers, the consumers are going to shift towards, let's just buy a new model, a brand new model. And then that's going to inevitably make the used market suffer. At least that's what my gut is telling me in this. And again, forgive me, I went to public school, but I think that that's what you're going to see. And then as they're kind of releasing this stuff, as the supply chain eases and they can get more raw materials in there so they can increase production and everything else. They're investing in this. So like this is a telltale sign to me that Wabash sees the fact that, you know, like they said, a micro event that could happen. There is enough reward tied to the risk of expansion that they're going to go it and they're going to go it and build it out. So that's more jobs. That's good. And then if you look at it from a freight perspective, how do you build a fucking building? Steel, sheet metal, all that fun shit, insulation. So what does that mean? More freight going into the Lafayette, Indiana area. So again, like that, that's just another opportunity, I think, of, all right, I'm not saying that there aren't bad shit that's happening out there, but there's an opportunity. And that's what we need to focus on, no matter what freight market it is, there's an opportunity for us. Um, and then it finishes up by extending the warehouse. Truckload and LTL carriers are stocking up on trailers for use in trailer pools. And again, like this is what you can do. You know, like I got to give a shout out to my friends over at Freight Vana with their Freight Vana X service offering like they're fucking way ahead of the game on this and building you know putting stage trailers and trailer pools and everything that's out there and operating that like that's a game changer that that's different that's away from the traditional brokerage sale so i gotta give a shout out to my friends over there because i know they're doing big things um and yeah so that article is uh from the joc u.s trailer demand defies economic uh downturn as a whole and i think that this will be a solid um it's 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 a sign that at least people are still purchasing equipment and then again if the new market is getting bought up and people shift away from the used market chances are used prices are going to start to drop uh would be my guess uh to make it more competitive and if you're looking to re-up again it's like you got to look at what are the people the larger companies doing you know and i and i alluded to this a few weeks back but i'll say it again you know when the market was sky high for used equipment you saw the night Swiss of the world offloading a lot of their equipment. And then when the market shifts back and the prices start to drop, then they're going to invest in a bunch of equipment and everything else because they're not going to buy at the top. They're going to sell at the top and buy at the bottom. That's just the way that a lot of those large companies roll. So again, success leaves clues. You know, if you're in an opportunity to purchase um, stuff in cash here over the next year, I would do that. I would look forward to that. That's what that's what my guess, that's what my gut would be telling me. I mean, shit, this is kind of completely unrelated from a standpoint, but like I just bought a brand new coffee pot this weekend that was severely reduced in price due to the fact that inventories are high and everything else. And that, you know, so it's again, it's like you got to play the market for what it is and you know, get some of those deals out there and then follow what a lot of these larger providers are doing. And, you know, because not 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 like to a T, but success leaves clues, you guys. All right. Next article is from fleetowner.com. DOT leader touts safety and making truck a better place to work for drivers. Um, Transportary Secretary Pete Buttigieg sat down with industry media at the ATA's management conference um, out in San Diego. Um, the nation's highest ranking transportation official came there to express our administration's understanding that trucking is absolutely vital to the supply chains that are the backbone of the American economy. Um, I will save a little bit. <laughs> U.S. Department of Transportation, uh, Pete Buttigieg, paid industry stakeholders a visit to discuss his plans to not only make trucking safer and more efficient, but also to make life better for men and women on the road. He detailed the Biden administration's trucking action plan, which includes a roadmap to improve truck driver pay, truck leasing agreements, and address the unique challenges that women face in the industry. And, uh, you know, last year we lost over 800 truck drivers to traffic qu crashes and reducing those tragedy tragedies is a shared responsibility across government at every level for uh, passenger vehicle drivers and truck drivers. Um, the administration also intends on bringing more drivers into the industry, including women and veterans, love it, and creating debt-free pathways into the career. As a part of this, the DOT have partnered with the U.S. Department of Labor to increase the number of registered truck driver apprenticeship programs. We've taken steps to streamline the issuing of commercial driver's licenses, providing let me see here, excuse me, providing additional funds, funding for state states to remove barriers, which has helped add 43,000 CDLs this year. 
Um, Buttigieg noted that 32% more than the same period in 2019. A uh, former military officer who served in Afghanistan and operated heavy equipment, Buttigieg said the department also is providing grants um, to cover training for veterans to get their CDL. And then they're also, you know, talked about truck parking. Again, I'm not going to take credit for it, but I haven't talking about it for a while. Um, but no, it's good to see that they are, that they're seeing that at the federal level and they are making investments into our infrastructure to improve uh, safety uh, for our drivers that are out there. Um, he noted that he had heard pleas directly from the truck drivers and the ATA about uh, fixing this. Um, and then in September, the DOT announced truck parking in, okay, included $15 million to add 120 new spaces in the uh, I-4 corridor between Florida and ta uh, Tampa and Orlando and $22.6 million to add 125 spots, I-40 East and Nashville. And they're using the funds for the Infrastructure Investment Jobs Act to modify. Yeah, that's more freight, you guys. That's more freight. Um, let me see. And then talking about making truck driving more appealing for all. Uh, let me see here. The board is tasked with identifying industry trends that are going out there, uh, how trucking companies and organizations can facilitate support for women in trucking, which I love. I want to see more of that as well. How to expand existing opportunities for women in the industry and enhance truck driver training, mentorship, education, and outreach programs. Whitney Young, to your point there. Um, then require better training. It is needed. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, there's a mathematical madness of allowing 50% of our workforce, 50% um, of our talent, and 50% of the people who could be the greatest, safest drivers in the country to uh, be underused and underappreciated as a resource. Uh, shame on us to allow that to, yeah, shame on us. Exactly. Um, you know, again, it goes on to talk about, I won't get into the final part here about talking about decarbonizing trucking uh because again i think indirectly that's slapping the face of a lot of people that are out there in there i think you know for me personally let's just hope this isn't a canned response all right let's hope that they're actually going to do something about it and the beauty of it is, is if they don't vote their fucking asses out all right if we're and, and again the change in the industry you guys has to start with us all right we are the transportation professionals we are on the ground in this industry every single day we have the most up to date information you know and we need to improve this industry on the core fundamental issues of it um autonomous battery powered decarbonization isn't a core fundamental issue of this industry i don't think again i can't speak for everybody but i don't think somebody doesn't drive a truck because it's not meeting their carbon neutral stance as a person um, I also don't think that they're not driving a truck because they're like, you know, other major factors. I think, you know, what we talk about every single day, driver safety, you know, some of these truck stops that are out there, when you actually talk to the drivers on the road, you know, even grown men don't feel safe sleeping in some of these truck stops that are out there. How do you think everybody else feels? You know, like that's a core fundamental issue, access to facilities. And I'm not just talking at the shipper and the receiver level. That's out there, you know, not having access to a fucking shower, you know, no, none of us would put up with it. You know, none of us would put up with that. So why are our drivers expected to put up with that? Not having access to food for whatever reason. Again, you can't fucking blame the supply chain for everything. All right. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a cause of it, but how do we expect to attract people to do a job when they're like, when the real issues of the industry aren't being addressed? That's my big problem. Let's address the core fundamental issues. Let's actually talk to drivers who are out on the road. And again, any driver who's listening to this, you are more than welcome to come on this live show and talk about this, what you're actually experiencing out there. Or fuck, if you want to do a full-on interview, we'll do a full-on interview for the podcast because I want to hear from drivers directly. You know, I want to hear from the, the, the hardworking men and women who are behind the wheel and what they're up against out there. That's how the change is going to happen as a whole is it, it's hearing from them um, directly and any driver out there who's listening to this or on the replay, hit me up. I'll, I'd love to have you come on and talk. Um, Lewis with dedicated trucking has hand slap on face emoji. Um, I don't know what that was directed at Lewis, but I kind of have an idea, man. Uh, but again, you guys, that article was from fleetowner.com. Uh, DOT leader tout safety and making trucking a better place to work for drivers. Um, Let's start with fuel prices first and foremost. 
whatever they can do to pull some strings to, you know, open up a pipeline or two to uh, help out with fuel prices to be fucking really cool. Um, anyways, on to the final article that we're going to break down on this beautiful Monday morning from the transportation capital of the world, which is Phoenix, Arizona. Carriers will become own worst enemy as demand declines. Catchy headline was from our friends over at FreightWaves.com. Uh, truckload contract rates have slowed, declined despite waning demand. Drive-in truckload rates have fallen about 9% since the part of the summer and have slowed their rate of descent this fall, according to freight waves. Um, is this a sign that shippers will not aggressively be peeling back the past two years of rate increases? I don't know. Drive-in contracts are still more than 35% higher than they were in June of 2020, but are essentially flat. So let's focus on the fact that they're flat year over year and that they're not still up, um, but they're flat, you know, that rates have peaked. The pandemic era tightness that began in mid-2020 started increasing trends of shorter cycle bids, mini bids, which allowed contractor rates to move faster. Um, before 2020, the average bid cycle was around 12 months. Mini bids aren't new. This isn't a new thing, all right? There was mini bid cycles that happened back in 2016, 2018, I want to say as well with some of my larger shippers. Um, mini bids happen, you guys. It's all about the market. But what you're going to see is you know a lot of okay let me uh transportation is not the epicenter of the shipping river i'm just trying to pull out some other key parts here concerns for capacity have shifted to bloated inventories and demand forecast getting these corrected bids take a lot of time and energy no they don't just hit up my friends over at emerge they can recycle that they can get that bid cycle down for those rfps very fast hit them up you guys hit them up hit up emerge if you're out there i know shippers are watching the show you guys are in my dms um the truth is, it's simply not a bid implementation activity. Mini bids are largely a mechanism of desperation. I don't think, I don't agree with that. I don't think mini bids are a mechanism of desperation at all. I think that um, mini bids are a way to put new and existing op or newer opportunities out there to bid that are on a project basis. Or if there was a drastic shift in the market, excess freight will be uh, thrown out there to be bid. Um, but again, what do I know? I moved three truckloads in my career. Um, again, I'm not saying that there aren't real things that are happening, but a lot of the strategy you're going to see, in, and mark my words on this in Q1, you're going to see a massive shift in the narrative because what is happening is a lot of the, in the freight market that we're in, which operates how it has historically pretty much every fucking year is, oh, got some shit on my face there. Um, what is going to happen is, is, a lot of the large asset companies and a lot of the large brokers are going to bid fucking very aggressive for volume in Q1. Again, if you're an owner op or a small fleet out there, there is opportunity for you and it's going to come because essentially I always refer to it as the Q1 all-stars where, you know, it's easy. Capacity is loose, volumes down. Anybody can fucking cover anything and large players go out there and they honor those contracts when it's convenient for them then it will get to a point where better paying customers volume starts to increase as the overall volume comes. So then the lower paying customers, all of a sudden tender rejection, tender rejection goes out to spot market. Um, you're going to start seeing those headlines about how tender rejection in the contracted market, depending on how the market plays out as a whole, that will be headlines in Q1 about how tender rejections are fucking through the roof because People will bid for volume. It will get to a point to where it's not profitable for them and they won't sustain those losses. So they will reject that tender. Then that goes out there on the spot market. When increased volume hits the spot market, then there is more loads and less trucks that are out there. So what does that happen? That means that rates start to increase. All right. So the spot market will rebound at some point. I don't, I'm not going to say a crystal ball and say, put a chart up here with an arrow pointing in one fucking direction and another and say, what time? But that's the evolution of this freight cycle. I don't know if it's going to be July, August, September of next year, but it will reach that point where the people who bid aggressively will not operate at those margins anymore. And they will fucking reject the load because they have other customers who are going to pay them more money. Um, that's kind of my soapbox for today. You guys, that article uh, carriers will become own worst enemies from our friends over at freightwaves.com. Um, again, that's it for today. You guys, um, we'll be back tomorrow. The freight coach morning show. We are the top morning show in transportation. We are live every single weekday, 8 30 a.m. Pacific, 10 30 central to break down some industry headlines and to provide some insight into what you guys can do with this. If you guys saw value in the show, 
share it. That's all I can ask. Share the show. If you guys could subscribe, if you guys could rank it on iTunes and Spotify, that just helps everything out because if you guys see value in this, chances are your network's going to see value in it as well. I appreciate you guys all so much and we'll be talking to you soon.